Hi, I'm Noelle Hyman with paperclipping.com and we're in the Ranger booth and we're looking at the designer challenge. I love seeing these and seeing what different artists are doing. So we're going to look at each one and the challenge was by Ranger to use the distress paint but they could use anything else they wanted. And they got a mixture of scrapbookers and mixed media artists and all kinds of people, a lot of whom you will recognize, so they can show the versatility of these distress paints. So no matter what kind of artwork you like to do, whether it is scrapbooking or art journaling or who knows what else, you can. this will be really great. So, I mean, there's so many ways to use this. We'll start over here. This is Shelly Hickox. I'm not, this is one I'm not familiar with, Shelly Hickox. So I hope I'm saying her name right. But she used a lot of these metal pieces that she's bent and curved and then did a lot of layering in here in the background. I'm assuming that the background and these are with distress paint. I'm not positive and it looks like she's maybe used the air spritzer, the new air spritzer. We've got Julie Fafan Balzer below for a totally different look. It's got kind of an industrial look but with lots of colors and a, a metallic type of foil maybe underneath and lots of embossing for totally different textures. So she's using this repetition of um, rectangles and squares, but you get the variety through the textures and the colors. And then we've got Allie Edwards here. And Allie did her classic favorite uh, square grid. And she painted with the Distress Paints a bunch of different textures, patterns, um, and, and soft colors. All right, over here we've got Amy Tan, another scrapbooker. And so this piece looks very much like a scrapbook page, but without pictures. And it looks like she's dabbed the paint on here and then maybe rubbed it on and blended it here and used it that way. So very much more of a scrapbooky look. And then we're coming back to an art piece, Debbie Tlack. I'm not sure how you say her name, but she goes by Artist Girl Muse. So we've got a kind of a fantasy type portrait and then above that is Wendy Vecchi. And she, this is classic Wendy with her kind of vintage look, a little bit of a scrapbooky kind of thing going on with some of these pieces here. And she's really blended hers up with um, what looks like either water, or I think yesterday we saw her using rubbing alcohol, so I'm not sure if that's what she did here. I can't remember if she blended that with distress paints or not. To the right, we've got Diane Reevely, and of course she, if you know her, you know she loves these fun little quirky skeletons and all these swirly little things and lots of patterns. So she's used paint on the background and then in all these dimensional flowers and toned them down into little like soft pastels. Over here we've got Anna Dabrowska, uh, Finnebear, and She's got all these amazing layers of all kinds of pieces. We've got some crocheted lace in that, some metal that she's curved. This is even like a screw or something. All kinds of buttons and dimensional flowers and gears that make up the hair and the dress. And she's used just a handful of colors for some high contrast in that one. All right, the Vintage Design Team used their metal pieces, their metal butterflies to create this dimensional art piece. We've got these beautiful leaves coming from the branch here and hanging down. And then you can see the distress paint used and blended really pretty um, with a number of different colors, including pinks for the sky in the background. And then all the different butterflies. The metal has been painted with the distress paint. We've got Debbie Adams here. And this is a collage piece of art that looks quite a bit scrapbooky too with lots of pieces that we typically see on scrapbooks and stamped images and it looks like she's mostly used the background for her paints but this is interesting too I recognize this as a die cut I think from Tim Holtz and his, with his new release and it looks like she's used some kind of molding dimensional molding paste or something for that below that is Donna Downey and I've never seen her do a work of art like this. This may be something new she's doing with the really, really thick dimensional types of, of medium here. But I definitely recognize the colors and the flowers, the poppy-like flowers. She's really put a ton of the black paint in there and then used it to adhere these beads. And then she's using some blues and greens and reds and oranges.
All right, let's go to the other side. And here we've got Tim Holtz, a very classic Tim Holtz sort of collage with some of his new fabric and some of his papers. And then he's layered stickers and, and other little cutout pieces into that and then painted painted different colors into it in different spots. So in some spots you'll see some kind of pinks and red or pinks and blue tones and then some greens up into here. And then we come back to some pinks and blues and some crackle in different spots. And then he's added some of his metal pieces and his um, woods and different things like that. Paula Cheney. This is a, a floral type of piece and she's used what looks like stencils and all kinds of different patterns that she's layered on top of each other using the paints to get completely different effects. We see here little bits of paper come in and then she's painted these flowers and stamped uh, words to the very top to finish it off. We've got Mosaha down at the bottom. She's a scrapbooker and this is very much an artsy kind of um, collage scrapbooking type page with some bright colors um, but with a vintage photo. And then to add dimension, she's layered some flowers, dimensional flowers, and this number two, and some different pieces. And you can see she used a lot of different um, effects with the distress paint too. This looks like maybe she stamped over a, some doily, a doily here, around here, but then she's got some drippage coming down on top of the earlier layers, lots of different layers of colors, and then I think the doily must have been the last layer over here. We have Jennifer McGuire, and you'll definitely recognize classic Jen with her uh, rainbow effect. She loves to do quite a bit, one color fading down into another, and the simple graphic hearts and words. Elizabeth Karchner, another scrapbooker. And this is something I've seen her doing a lot lately on her scrapbook pages, where she's taking thicker letter stickers and then painting over them to get um, some visual interest and some dimension there. And she turned this into a scrapbook type page. We've got Rochelle Christensen. And she's done uh, like a collage here with a lot of three dimensional items. Um, she probably used distress paint for this paper butterfly that she's collaged into this. This part is down, but then it comes up over the branches here. And then here's a piece of paper down. And she's blended those paints into the background and then layered other things over it. Like this paper seems to go over. It's like, that looks like tissue paper that's been torn and goes over the color there. We've got Tammy Tetero down here another very very three-dimensional type of collage it's her classic shabby chic style there with these old vintage book pages and paint brushes how fun is that and this old vintage lace here she looks like she sparkled up these little bird pieces and you can see she probably used the distress paint here in the ribbon and gives it a great shabby chic look and then down here on the canvas in the background. You can see that paint for sure and probably into this foil here and the butterfly and some of these other metal pieces that she's got. Below that is Sherry Carroll. And here's another very, um, uh, some, she used this kind of medium that's, dim that's dimensional and gives it a lot of texture. And then it looks like she really blended the, the paints in and used lots of water to have it blend together and then drip down underneath this heart. And this heart, by the way, is made out of corrugated cardboard. And then it looks like she put a, some molding paste or um, some kind of a dimensional paste over that so that in some ways it's, it, you can see the corrugated part and then in other parts it's got more of a flatter sort of effect to it. We've got Dina Wakely over here. Dina does a lot of portrait type paintings. And uh, so you can see that. So I'm assuming she probably mainly used the distress paints, if not completely, to paint this portrait and get these great background effects with her stencils and some words there. And then she hand cuts these little pieces, stitch things together to, for the collar of the dress. This is the gentleman crafter, Jim R. Hankins, and this one is the most dimensional of all. And it's, it's this whole, uh, what is this called, the clock? 
I can't think of what kind of clock this is. Cuckoo clock. With the little bird coming out. That's absolutely amazing. And then these metal pieces by Tim Holtz, but some of them have been painted with the distress paint and layered up with the clock pieces here. He, uh, I love how he textured his canvas using what looks like a flower stencil and then using the distress paint to, to color that all up. And you may not notice this right away, but these pieces that frame the whole piece, they're clock hands, like old vintage clock hands, like this. So here's a big one, the, the long hand, and here's the short hand. And then the last one is the Crafty Chica, um, Kathy Canamario, I think is how you say her last name. And she's gone back to her roots and done like the Dio, uh, oh God, I'm not even going to try to say it because I'm on camera and I may forget, but we've got glasses here and flowers and all kinds of fun stuff and then the image in the middle. So this is the Ranger Designer Challenge for 2014 where the designers were challenged to use distress paints and they came up with all kinds of different stuff. So no matter what kind of crafter or artist you are, you can, you'll love these distress paints. I use them all the time and I love them. I'm Noelle Hyman with paperclipping.com.